Hi, it's Marianne of MW's Designs. Today I've been painting last minute watercolor Mother's Day cards, but if you don't need a Mother's Day card, they could also be used for birthday, um, thinking of you, or thank you, whatever you need a card for. Um, the basic design is a wreath with um, flowers in um, a balanced position and then I've also added a sentiment and these little 3D butterflies. They're just painted and cut out then glued on. So I think it just uh, helps finish off the card. I first started with a rectangle but I thought with the circle wreath it ended up having quite a lot of white space so for this one I cut it into a square and then I had a card base from the dollar store that I just it was a rectangle but I cut it down into a square and also the the envelope so that worked for that but I I decided that when I have these butterflies added on the extra white space of the rectangle isn't too bad and I might make butterflies that are a little larger than these ones and that would fill up the space a little more or you could add other little decorative bits like maybe um, ribbon or washi tape uh, just to fill up that space. This is on a Reflections uh, card base from Michaels and I had some nice paper that I liked for the background and um, I thought that went really well and these two both have the white background but sometimes I like to have a little more color in the background so um, I gave this one a green background leaving that white space for me to paint the wreath and the flowers and this one um, I did an oval so that it seemed to fit the space better so you can do whatever you think looks best I will show you how I started this um, I just have some little rectangles uh, cut out of a 140 pound watercolor paper and if you want to have color in the background I'll show you how I did that but as I said you could leave it white so all I did was I just used a pencil to draw the a light oval shape and if you go around like that first, sometimes that helps you get the shape a little better. Then um, I draw another one inside so that there's a space that I will leave white. Then um, you probably can't see that too well, but I'm even going to erase a little more of my lines so that I don't have too much pencil on my paper and just leave enough so that you are eight when you're doing it you can see what you need and if a little pencil does get left on there and gets covered up with the paint and you can't erase it afterwards it mostly will get covered up when you paint the wreath. Okay, so I am going to use just a large flat brush with plain water and I'm just going to wet inside the middle of the oval so that that's all wet and then I'm going to go around the outside edge and make sure that that's all wet and I'm trying to get fairly close to my pencil lines without going over them 
and then I will be able to erase them afterwards if I need to. Then I want just a little bit of green for my background, but you could use whatever color you like. And this green is a mixture of ultramarine blue, um, what is that, viridian and sap green. So now just very lightly touch inside here and it will stay in the wetted area so it should leave that white area around the edge and if you find you've got a little bit too much color just tap your brush off on a paper towel or cloth and then just come and lift off the excess and it will dry a little bit lighter too so that shouldn't be too bad. Okay, and then I would also go around this part, but for the purposes of the video, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. So I would just set that to dry. And then this is one that is dry and you can see I have my white circle and, or oval and there might be a little bit of pencil mark left that I can erase. It didn't have very much though. Then I decide where I want to place my flowers so that it's balanced and I thought um, kind of the bottom two corners and then not quite in the center but not quite in a corner for the top so right about here then I just start painting my flowers and they're very simple flowers I have a blue here that is ultramarine blue and viridian and it's quite watery so I just tap my brush off a little bit and then I'm going to make my blue petals and I have six petals or seven sometimes it just depends how it works out and then I leave a little white center then Let's put one down here. Okay, I've got something there that I don't want. Uh, it will probably brush off afterwards. Okay, so my six petals. And then I will go back up to this one that's dry now. And I'm going to make another one that overlaps the first one just a bit and leaving the center in the middle okay so I will let that dry and I'm going to move on to my purpley color or no I think I'm going to do this uh, orangey brown color and this this is actually burnt sienna and I like it because it's a nice rich flower color and then I'm and these flowers are not any particular kind of flower I'm just making flower shapes so this one is going to end up being a side view of a flower so I'm putting a light coat of watercolor on and then I will go back in later and just add a touch of darker on the bottom and I think for these I like having three of them so let's put one more here and if they go over the blue that's okay and then down here, let's put one. 
and I'm not going to do all the areas of the flowers um, just so it doesn't take too long for this video. Okay, so there's my orangey yellow flowers. Then um, now I'm going to do my purple violet. And this is just a violet hue with a little bit of viridian in it so that it's oops, not so, um, it's just a little bit darker color that I think shows up better. And I like to just add in some spots one flower and then in another area I will make maybe three. And they're light at first but um, I will darken them later. And also I'm trying to leave a white center but I didn't on that one but that is okay. It still will look all right. And then maybe another one right down here. Okay. And then down here, let's do one. And we'll do maybe three over here. And each of these have four petals, but you can do whatever you like, and you can do whatever flower design you prefer. Just um, have colors that go together and it will end up looking quite nice. So now I am going to use my darker um, yellow color with a little bit of burnt umber in it just to darken it a bit. You could use you know, other combinations just to make a little bit darker color. And then I'm just going to go on the bottom here and that'll be the petals that are the front of the flower. Okay, and I'm going to use this same color. Well, actually, no, I don't want it quite that dark, so I'm going to completely clean my brush off just in some water. And then I'm going to go back into this lighter orangey yellow, and I'm going to use that color as the center of the blue and purple flowers. It's nice to coordinate your colors so that um, you're repeating the same colors in several different spots. That way it gives you a, a more cohesive effect. So now I'm going to go back to my purple. And I didn't really tell you the sizes of my brushes. This one is about a three. And I'm going to use that to make little thin brush strokes just with the tip. And they were supposed to be brush strokes, but they didn't end up that way. But it'll still um, look like the center of the flower. I could have even used a smaller brush for this part. That's a little better. Just something to give the effect of the flower centers. And this one maybe is a little drier now, so I'll go back. It's always a good idea to make sure your um, petals are mostly dry. You can see they weren't quite dry over here. So I'm going to go back with the purple again. and just give it another touch here. And that's what I like to do. I like to let parts of the flowers dry and then go back and just add 
more color in certain spots. It just gives it a little more depth to your flowers. And makes them more interesting. And I use the rule of threes for some of this. Like I have three areas of flowers and then threes and threes and then well there's three of those there's only two of those but you don't always have to use the the rule of three of well the rule of odds because we like to see odd numbered groupings of things somehow that is pleasing to our to our senses Okay, and I'm going to go back and just make that a little darker. Anyway, the overall effect afterwards um, ends up being quite nice, even if they're not totally perfect. So I like to go back in here and give this a little darker blue in some spots. And a friend of mine told me that what she likes to do is even add a little bit of sparkle to some of her flowers and they end up looking so beautiful. I usually use sparkles when I'm doing skies and stars, that type of thing. But um, now that I've seen hers that have little bits of sparkle, and she, she does it very judiciously. She doesn't overdo it and that um, adds a nice effect too if you if you like sparkles and I I really do so I forgot that center okay not great but it'll do to give you the idea then I'm going to use my greens to do the um, leaves around between the flowers now I have a this is actually a number three brush, even though it doesn't say on here. And I have my green that is blue, or ultramarine blue, viridian, and sap green. And it's a little bit dark, but I have it fairly watery, so it will come out to be kind of a medium green. Then this one is darker. It's the same green, the same combination of um, hues, but I added a little bit of Payne's Gray just to darken it. Okay, so I like to do, um, I think I'm going to do in between here. That This will um, show you without taking too long. So I like to have my stem come along here and just a little bit of a curve in it then I'm going to do flat and then the tip to do the stem and flat for the leaf and do a stem Oh, that one I did the other way. You can do it that way too, however you like. And they're not all the same, so that adds a bit of interest. Maybe one more in there. And you could come back later and just darken some of these leaves too. That gives it a little more dimension. Then I like to take my very tiny brush. This is a zero. And again, that same green. But I want to add a little bit of lightness. So I'm just going to make very tiny stems 
and with some of them branching off and then just a little dot at the end and I don't know what kind of plant that is but it just gives an effect that I like. So let's do that one. And what it also does is it fills up some of that white space that's in there. You don't want to have too much white space. You want to have the effect of quite a bit of green. And then that really gives that nice light feel. And you can even put just in some random little tiny dots and that fills the space so and just fill it all up and then you will end up with something like this and as I said you can go in with your little bit darker green and just add some touches so that there are some areas that are lighter some areas that are darker and if you wanted to you could even put in an, another color or two of green just depending on how much variation of color you want. I'm trying not to make this too complex. I want to have a card that doesn't take me forever to make. They're, these are a little bit time consuming but very enjoyable and relaxing to paint um, and worth I think spending a little time on it. So then when the card is finished, that part of it, then I like to paint my butterflies and I have actually shown how to do, how I, how I do it anyway. Um, I have my number six angular brush and that makes nice butterfly wings so I think maybe I'll do a purple one and I just do the top of the wings and then you can use the pointed part to make the oval or roundish bottom wing and then be a little bit more color there to make the head more color. <laughs> okay, and the thorax and the abdomen. Okay, and if you need to go back to get a little more definition, you can do that. Or if you don't have an angular brush, you could also use a round brush or um, it's kind of just a flat brush but it's a small one. So that's basically what I do for the butterflies. Then um, here's one that I have more finished. Actually I should, if this is dry I can show you. I use some of my um, micron pens um, yeah and they're zero 05 so I have a, a purple one here um, you could also use blue on purple that would look nice but then I just go around the wings just to give it a little more definition And around the head, the antennae, and thorax and abdomen, just a little bit. And then um, whatever kind of design. Sometimes I just do little lines that are branching in different directions. It's not a real butterfly, but just the effect of it and then sometimes I like to do nice teardrop shapes those are kind of pretty all right so that's basically what I do for that and then 
This one is dry, so I cut it out. Fussy cut. And you probably already know you should turn your paper rather than your scissors and you get a good outline of the shape. And I'd like to cut out the antennae if I can. Sometimes that's a little hard. If you find it too hard, you could just cut around them and it still will look okay. That is a tricky spot. Okay, and then around the wings. I'm not very practiced at this, but the more you do it, of course, the better you get at it. Get rid of those. And then there's just a little piece here that's too long. So cut that off. And there is my butterfly cut out. Now it's white. Well, actually, I think I did paint that, but I like to paint the edges too so that they're not left white. So I have my purple and if you don't want to get paint all over your fingers you could use tweezers. And this, these pens are not color fast so if you paint over the butterfly and then paint on the edges and back you will get a blending of the pens and I like that because it seems more delicate to me rather than really bold lines on a butterfly. I think butterflies should have more muted colors. And then on the back and whoop, he landed on the mat there. Okay so now I'm going to just use a paper towel and Pat it off a bit. That just again gives a more muted effect. Okay, and then I just use my thumbnail and bend it in the center. Then they can be added to the card. And as I said, on some of these, I'm maybe would make the butterflies a little bit larger. So I just put whatever adhesive on that part, the folded part, and then wherever I want to attach them. And the rule of threes, I have three butterflies on here, or rule of odds, and that ends up looking very nice. So that's my Mother's Day card. And I hope you like it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and, if, and leave a comment. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Hit the, the button and the bell so you'll be notified about upcoming videos. And I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.